Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Sealed for Good. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we're going to finish off with our series on waterproofing failures and today we're really going to focus on environmental factors and how they contribute to waterproofing failures, things to be aware of. Um, and things you can do to sort of uh, reduce the risk of this happening on one of your sites. So environmental factors, what do we mean? So it's really things that are beyond the scope of the contractor. So obviously we can't control the weather, um, but there are some things that we can do to sort of uh, create more consistent conditions on site, which we'll cover. Um, but it primarily relates to uh, weather, ambient conditions, and let's explore the different conditions and how they can negatively impact the waterproofing application. The application of a membrane is predicated by the ambient and surface conditions. This can be found on the product TDS and generally will give you a range between 5 and 35 degrees Celsius as the recommended temperature to apply a liquid applied membrane. It also specifies the drying and curing times and this is determined by a standardized conditions through extensive lab testing. Generally, when the product is tested, it'll be over a dry substrate in a controlled environment of 23 degrees and 50% relative humidity. Application and curing of a membrane is never going to replicate lab conditions, but there needs to be a baseline set or a point of reference. Conditions outside this specified baseline will naturally exponentially increase or decrease curing times. Let's look at the specific environmental conditions outside the scope of the recommended application that can contribute to waterproof and membrane failures. So what happens during cold and freezing conditions? When membranes are attempted to be applied below the recommended surface and ambient conditions, then they simply won't dry and they will remain in a wet or not cured stage. Applying a membrane at the minimum temperature recommended allows a product to cure to its intended state ensuring tensile strength, adhesion, and elongation properties develop as required. Even if a liquid membrane is applied within the recommended conditions, at the lower temperature range, this will still extend the drying and curing time for a membrane. This is important to consider for all curing stages, whether it be recoat stage, overlay stage, and of course, service stage. This will be especially important for external applications that are vulnerable to rain. Humid conditions is another important consideration. High humidity conditions will drastically slow curing as it prevents the discharge of moisture from the membrane film into the atmosphere as the air above the membrane is already saturated. As with cool conditions, this risks the product not curing. In addition, when you have a humid environment or especially in the substrate, this also creates a high risk of membrane blisters if vapor barrier primers are not utilized. So when you have a situation of a cool and humid environment, this is especially critical in an external application and ensure that you're checking for imminent rain. If the membrane hasn't sufficiently dried or cured, this can cause re-emulsification or washout. It can also cause blisters and delamination of the substrate as the temperatures warm up and moisture is drawn upward, causing the bubbling effect. Hot conditions also present a number of challenges. Failure to maintain a wet edge due to membrane skinning, unable to form a continuous and harmonious membrane film. Membrane can pull up from itself and compromise the uniformity and integrity of the film. Pinholing and voids in the membrane from rapid evaporation is also a high risk. Outgassing of concrete as a substrate warms, air and moisture vapour trapped in concrete pushes through liquid components, further increasing risk of pinholes and craters. So here are some preventative measures to make sure that you're not a statistic. So always refer to the manufacturer's TDS for recommended application conditions, drying and curing details. And remember, anything that's not in the TDS, we always have our team available to take your calls. Understand how ambient conditions can affect or prolong curing times, especially if rain is forecast for external conditions after the membrane has been applied. Research future weather conditions during the window of application. Accept that externally, sometimes waterproofing is impractical and needs to be rescheduled. Test for substrate dampness and residual moisture. Use vapour barriers as standard practice externally to prevent outgassing and against any residual substrate moisture. Schedule external works in warmer seasons 
for the cooler parts of the day or when the substrate is cooling rather than heating up. Maintain warmer ambient temperatures to facilitate curing. Things like using heaters and fans as well. Fans are exceptionally useful to diffuse humidity levels by expelling the moisture from the air. Covering and protecting the membrane against direct sunlight or with rain where practical. Consider the membrane type used, for example, cementitious coatings are not solely reliant on ambient conditions to dry or cure. Product selections. We obviously have the 38FC, which is our fast cure standard membrane, but you should also look at things like our Express Multi Pro. This allows for an application of a liquid applied membrane that could withstand rain after three hours. P39 where you may require additional UV protection and of course the jewel in the crown our BRW PFN sheet membrane which will overcome a lot of those factors when it comes to environmental conditions. If you have any questions feel free to drop a comment below or reach out to our technical support team on 1800 650 435. Don't forget to like and subscribe, stay tuned for next week's episode and happy waterproofing.